So you've got your 3D printer and it's great, but you're sick to death of having to either use uh, an SD card and plug it in or have your machine constantly tethered by a USB cable. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to set up AstroPrint on a Raspberry Pi. Okay, so if you watched the channel previously, you'll know a couple of things about me. First of all, I have a Wanho Duplicator 4S that I've had for around three or four years now. And probably about three of those years, I've been running an Astro Print box, which is basically giving me uh, network capability to my 3D printer. So I can send print jobs to it. Uh, I can start, stop and monitor and make modifications to the temperatures and everything. I can also um, slice in the cloud and then send straight to uh, my printer as well. And I recently got this Wanho D9 Mark II. Uh, so I need another AstroPrint box so that I can do the same thing with this. So in order to kind of get this uh, up and running, you need a few things. First of all, you need a Raspberry Pi 2 or above. They do recommend a 3, but I'm using a 2 because I have one laying around. And obviously this is just a 3D printed box that I've put together. You will also need some form of Wi-Fi dongle. Um, I like to use the Edimax ones. That, that was originally the kind of one that only worked with this. Uh, but if you look on their website, there is some information uh, as opposed to other dongles that work. But I'd recommend this, and I'll put links to these items in the description as long, along with a, video, uh, a link sorry, to the AstroPrint website. You also need an SD memory card. They recommend uh, at least eight gigabytes. I'm using 16 gigabytes just because it was pretty cheap. Then you need to use the USB cable, probably that came with your printer. If not, just uh, you need to get one of those as well. And then you also have the option to be able to monitor your, your printing using a camera. I use one of these uh, original PlayStation cameras for two reasons. First of all, back when this first came out, this is one of the only printers that worked with it. Uh, not the printers, a <laughs> camera. Um, but it costs about £15. The image isn't fantastic, but it's good enough to see uh, if your print job is running okay or not. So once we've got all those things together, then the next thing for us to do is to connect to the computer, download some tools, and then set things up. I'm gonna leave this printer off uh, for the duration of this video just because the fans are quite noisy. Uh, a couple of things also to note, depending on what version of printer you have, there may be some kind of oddities of how it works. So for example, on my Wanho uh, D4, that works perfectly fine. I get um, dialogue information on the screen, everything so I can see what's happening. On this Mark 9 currently, the screen just stays uh, with the default settings on. So it doesn't show me anything about um, the fact it's about to print or heating anything. Um, everything that, that relies on the computer screen. So just things to keep in mind, Obviously there's a link with all the different printers that it's compatible with, so you can check that out as well before going ahead and putting this together. So let's start off um, and connect over to the computer. So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously go to the AstroPrint website um, and download the image file. So a couple of things to mention about AstroPrint. They also have a desktop tool where you can do um, slicing, I've used it a couple of times, it seems to work quite well. So depending on what you want, you can either use the tools you're already using for slicing, use the AstroPrint tools to slice on your desktop, um, or you can also upload to the cloud and AstroPrint will do the slicing in the cloud as well. As you can see on the screen, lots of different printers are compatible. Some of them are verified or not, that just means that the AstroPrint people themselves have verified it or not. Uh, but in general, most things seem to work, there's very few um, incompatibilities with it. But again, check that out um, before you go ahead. Or perhaps you want to go ahead anyway, you know, someone's gonna, gonna tinker around with things. So if we go to the downloads page, we are gonna download what's called the AstroBox gateway software. If you're not comfortable doing some of this stuff and creating an image file and putting it on a flash drive, you can order one from their site and they will ship it to you. But it really is uh, pretty straightforward. So you can either download it as a zip file or download it as a torrent file. I'm just going to download the zip because it's super, super easy and it doesn't take that long. 
So as well as downloading the zip file, we now need to download something to be able to get that image file out of the zip and onto the SD card. So here we're gonna use this uh, Etcher tool. Again, I'm doing all this on the Mac, but it's gonna be very similar if you're using uh, a PC as well. Once we've got things downloaded, we obviously need to install the Etcher tool and then also open up the zip file and extract from it the image file that we are then gonna copy onto, or actually not copying, it's writing to the SD card. Okay, so once we're in a position to that, we need to plug in uh, the SD card uh, into our computer. It should be detected automatically, but if you've got multiple cards, then you will need to make sure you manually change it and select the right one. Then we will select the image file for the AstroBox uh, print tool for the Raspberry Pi. This will be the one with the extension to IMG. And then we're simply gonna flash this. It's gonna take about five minutes or so to do the flashing and then do some verification. Once that's completed, then we can remove it safely from our computer and then plug it in to our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so at this stage we need to do a few things. Plug in um, our SD card into the SD card slot uh, on our Raspberry Pi. We also then need to get, um, in our case, the Edimax Wi-Fi dongle. I tend to plug this in into the topmost uh, USB port, only for the main reason is it makes the little LED light that uh, signifies Wi-Fi transmission easy to see, because if it's on the bottom you're plugging in for cables, and that's gonna be a problem. Then you're gonna plug in um, the connector for your printer. Um, obviously I just plug this straight underneath and then you need some form of power to connect this up. Once you've connected that up into your printer and connected to the power, then you just need to kind of be a little bit patient, maybe three or four minutes to allow the Astro print box to fully boot and then start its ad hoc um, wireless that you can then connect to. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. If you don't have access to an ethernet uh, connection on your network, then you will rely on having to use an ad hoc network. I'm gonna use an ethernet cable just for simplicity uh, on the screen, but the process is very much uh, the same. And I'll mention to you at a different point when things will look a little bit different on your screen. So now the device will be running because you've waited three or four minutes. Then what we need to be doing is checking for a, a different Wi-Fi network um, in your area. So on the Mac, you obviously would just click the little Wi-Fi um, dongle on, on your screen. You can do this obviously from your laptop or desktop or from your mobile phone, anything that basically can connect to a Wi-Fi network. As you can see on mine, uh, it's transmitting um, an ad hoc Wi-Fi network of AstroBox-5983. Once you've connected to that, you've got a couple of options. You can either connect to that um, direct its IP address, which I'll put down below, or my preference would be that you connect to it um, by its network name. So in my case, I'm going to go to HTTP astrobox-5983.com. So that's local. Those four numbers, you will replace that with whatever your four numbers are. And then once you press enter, you will be presented um, with the internet page, or the web page, I should say, allowing you to now begin the setup of your Astro Box. So here we can change the name uh, from the default setting. I changed this to be Duplicator 9 Mark II. As mentioned already, I have, well, we'll have two of these boxes running. So I want to be able to easily differentiate between the two uh, when it comes to try and schedule uh, print jobs, etc. So I'll change that and then we will move ahead with the internet setup. Now, because I'm already connected to the network via ethernet, the connection will be verified instantaneously and straight away. If you are connected, or if you need to connect to your Wi-Fi network, I should say, it will prompt you and say, please choose a Wi-Fi network. You need to then select your Wi-Fi network, put in your Wi-Fi password, then it will connect and verify it's successfully connected to the internet. You will see this option that's by default set to turn off the hotspot when a network connection is found. I suggest just leaving that um, 
to remove it because you, you should need this once everything is set up. Then we'll go on to the printer selection method. Obviously you can do this either disconnected or connected from your printer. Um, basically you want to select the manufacturer of your printer and then the model and then we need to assign this to our AstroBox account. If you don't have an account already it's free to set up um, so simply um, go to create a new account, put your information in um, and then log in again. So I already have an account so we'll just kind of skip through and again it's going to ask us to verify that our printer is connected. Now in this video I don't have the printer connected right now so it's going to try and communicate with the box uh, and be unsuccessful. I'm just showing you this because people may be doing this real time or kind of in a separate room from where they have their printer. Things to note here is um, what driver you use. So typically you, most of the kind of things that aren't MakerBot use G-code um, typically. So for me, I'm leaving it as um, G-code and then you may need to adjust your board rate. So I do adjust my board rate a bit later on, um, but you can check on your manufacturer's website for that. If you're not sure about anything, just leave it as default um, or you can just skip um, the printer connection setup now I and mean, you can come and do that a little bit later. Once that's been done, you will then be taken to the AstroBox dashboard. Here again, I'll show you the settings. So again, in my example, I haven't got the printer set up right now. I'm just showing you how you can verify the name has changed and then also connect um, to the internet via a wireless connection if you didn't have that set up already. So pr pretty much ready to go now. Um, so we just need to just verify a few things. As you can see here in the profile, I'm gonna do a, a couple of changes. I do have a heated bed on this printer, so I wanna enable that. Typically my heated bed can, can't go too much over 100, so I'm gonna set that limit to 100. And I need to verify my movement. So you have the X, Y, and Z axis. On my particular printer, the head moves on the X and the Z axis, but it's the bed mo that moves on the Y axis. So I just need to change these toggles to verify that so the Astro box knows how to control the printer effectively when it's sending its commands. Once I've done that, just save the profile and you should be pretty much good to go. Okay, so now everything's set up, um, I'll just show you how to do um, basically a test print. I've now uh, connected uh, a camera, so you can either just take still photos or do live stream. You can see I just took a, a basic picture here. So again, so if you had a camera better positioned, you can get a good view of what's happening. You can now upload um, SDL or G code code files or whatever it is it's compatible with your printer. Again, if it can't be read locally, it will upload to the cloud and then do the slicing for you. As you can see here, I already have a file in the cloud as well as some internally. If you have a USB stick or a, a form of storage, you can access those as well. Once you've done that, you simply press the print button and it will then go to this print screen. So again, you have a couple of options here. Um, you can try and do some live streaming or you can just take snapshot videos at certain intervals and save those files if you wish. You can see here, this is, this is a single extruder machine. So it starts to heat the extruder and um, the print bed. And then once it's heated up, it will start doing the print for you. And here we go. We can see now it's started. So based on its current estimation, so 174 layers, it's going to take three hours, 44 minutes, and you can kind of print, cancel, pause, and do everything from this screen, uh, and it works really, really well. The tool also offers you the ability to kind of schedule different jobs. So if you've got lots of jobs you want to be doing one after another, you can schedule all that. If you also use um, the mobile app, it will send you alerts to say print jobs is complete. Also send you them as an email that the job is complete as well. All you need to do is come over, clear the bed, and then it will move on to the next print job. So that's it. I hope this is kind of helpful. I hope it's just a quick video to let you know that there are ways to make your non-networked machine networkable pretty much as long as it has a USB port and AstroPrint or the AstroBox tool 
has the right drivers to kind of communicate and make the printer do its thing. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.